Most people know about haemoglobin in the red blood cells carry oxygen around the body in the blood vessels. But less well known is myoglobin. So what is myoglobin? Where is it found? And how is it different from haemoglobin? Well, to start with, both are somewhat similar in that both use iron-based proteins which bind oxygen to them and they're red in colour. However, a myoglobin molecule is a quarter the size of a haemoglobin molecule. Myoglobin has a greater affinity for oxygen than haemoglobin does. This means if you place molecules of haemoglobin and myoglobin side by side, the myoglobin will pull the oxygen molecules from the haemoglobin and store it. And this is the key to the function of myoglobin both in humans and in many other animals as well. So in normal conditions the blood with the haemoglobin based red blood cells flowing around our bodies passes oxygen to the nearby cells and collects the carbon dioxide. However, at the same time the red blood cells also top up the oxygen in the myoglobin and remove any carbon dioxide that the myoglobin may have acquired. So the myoglobin under normal conditions has a large supply of oxygen to release to the cells if and when it's needed. Myoglobin is found in large amounts in the skeletal muscles in humans, but not in the heart, stomach and other similar organs. It's because these organs need to be in general continual use. So they rely upon myoglobin for the proportion of their oxygen supply could be in serious difficulties when the myoglobin was depleted. So instead, the heart and other organs rely upon a steady supply of oxygen directly from the haemoglobin. This does mean though, that major muscles like the arms and legs have substantial amounts of myoglobin stored in the muscle tissues. So if there's a sudden need for a burst of energy, the muscles have all the oxygen they need to perform the task until the myoglobin runs out of oxygen. Then the muscles need to fall back on a normal supply from the haemoglobin. This burst of energy is normally enough to get us out of immediate danger. By the time the supply from the myoglobin is running low, the heart rate and breathing rate should be increased and a better supply of oxygen from the haemoglobin is being delivered. The storage of myoglobin in the muscles is what turns the muscles red and it's the cause of the red liquid that can ooze out of raw meat rather than it being blood. In addition, the chemical change in the myoglobin also turns it from red to pink and the muscle tissue is cooked. And while humans do have a fair amount of myoglobin in our muscles, there are some animals which have a far greater proportion in their bodies. Now generally, the smaller the animal, the less likely it is to rely upon myoglobin for oxygen storage. And the larger the muscle of the animal, the more myoglobin is likely to be present. However, deep ocean diving animals like whales and seals who need to be able to store large amounts of oxygen during a dive and have huge amounts of myoglobin in their muscles. When the muscles in the human body are damaged through illness or injury, this can result in the myoglobin being released from the muscles and entering into the bloodstream. Now small amounts of myoglobin can be filtered out from the blood serum by the kidneys and absorbed. However, if the levels are too high for the kidneys to cope with, this can result in myoglobin being passed from the body in the urine, turning the urine a dark red or brown colour. It's this colour change which is normally referred to when medical professionals are talking about having blood in your urine. Though it's likely to be myoglobin rather than haemoglobin, it's easy to refer to it as blood to avoid overcomplicating the issue and why this change in urine colour is a significant indication that something's wrong with the human body.